Hello and welcome. I'm guessing if you're here, you've read the title. This was a chess match played between Andrew Tate and Piers Morgan while live on TV. Now, this was a blitz chess match. They had five minutes for the entire game. Um, that's not to say five minutes each. They said five minutes for the whole thing. Um, and a uh, quick spoiler. <laughs> In this game, Andrew Tate played with an astonishing 98% accuracy, which is a nearly perfect game. But let's just get into it. So the game starts with d4, d5, and c4. Now this is known as the Queen's Gambit opening. Um, it's not really a gambit, because taking is known to be not too good for black. It's not quite refuted, but it's pretty close to it. Um, and so Piers plays the normal move, pawn to e6. Uh, Andrew uh, develops the knight to c3, and here the normal moves are, I've put them out, either c6 or knight f6 are the two most common moves. Uh, but here Piers plays a slight inaccuracy, which is knight to c6, nothing game changing so far, it's not a great move, but it's fine. Andrew responds by developing his bishop to f4, and Piers develops his bishop to b4, pinning Andrew's knight to the king so it cannot move. Okay, now Andrew says, okay, I don't care, I'll play e3, defending the c4 pawn with the bishop. Now here Piers takes, and Andrew recaptures, which taking was an inaccuracy by Piers, he should not have done that. Uh, but it's fine. You shouldn't have done that because although these pawns are doubled, they're not a weakness. Because in the future, let's say, I don't know, what does black do? Develops the knight maybe? Here, white can take, three captures, then white can play here. And now the center, for black center, has been weakened. It doesn't matter though, I suppose, because, I mean, it's it's not like, they're not super, super strong players, so it, it probably won't make a difference. Okay, now here's a pretty big inaccuracy. Piers plays queen to h4, which um, attacks nothing right now and also just blunders the c7 pawn. Okay, Piers plays knight to f6, um, which, okay, I understand the idea. He wants to maybe put it on e4 or g4 and try and take here. Um, now here, the best move is knight to f3. You develop the knight, attack the queen, but here Andrew decides he wants to play bishop back to g3, a fine move. Piers moves the queen, now Andrew develops the knight hitting the queen, and Piers blunders his queen, and says this. You're running out of time. Oh. Stop stalling. I know what it's you're fine. doing. I'll just take a oh, God! Anyways, um, Andrew takes the queen, and Piers doesn't give up, right? He's not going to give up just yet. He moves his rook onto the e-file. Now Andrew plays queen to c2, developing the queen, putting it on a good square. Andrew, yeah, that's what Andrew has done. Now Piers says, go away, knight. Andrew says, okay. I'll go away. Now Piers plays this move, which um, does nothing, like he's not attacking anything, I guess he's lost his queen, he's panicking a little bit, he's trying to do something, this does nothing, Andrew plays h3, knight goes back, now Andrew puts his bishop on e5, because he understands that, okay, I am up a queen, the more pieces that are traded off, the better for me. So Piers says, okay, I'll take, Andrew recaptures with the knight, very strong square for the knight, now Piers takes the c-pawn, Andrew recaptures with developing move, now, Piers plays a b6, so because he thinks, okay, this is what I imagine he's thinking, I want to get this bishop out, I can't move it here because the knight would take it, so, we play b7 to develop the bishop to, b6 to develop the bishop to b7. Okay, Andrew castles, now Piers plays g6, which does nothing, and also invites weaknesses near his king, and Andrew immediately capitalizes and sacrifices his knight on g6. Piers doesn't take back just yet, because after recaptures, now queen recaptures with check, and anywhere the king goes, all of this is going to fall with a check. Okay, so Piers puts his bishop on b7, develops it. Now Andrew plays rook a to e1, trapping this f rook in. Uh, not a great move, but it doesn't matter, he's up a queen. Now Piers recaptures, and, well, Andrew recaptures with check. And now everything gets taken. Piers blocks with the bishop. Now, funny thing. Andrew takes on e6, and Piers plays rook to c8, seemingly blundering the rook, but that's the top engine move. The top engine move is to just give up the rook. I don't see why, but okay, Andrew takes it. Now he takes with king, blundering this rook. Piers still doesn't give up, however. He's trying to, hopefully, Andrew runs out of time to finish the game. He plays bishop to d5. Now, I believe his, this was his idea, because this rook can't move. Andrew plays, attacks bishop, bishop goes in attacking rook. Now this rook can't be saved, right, it's, it's a goner. I, I guess you could play this, and then move it out, and you save that rook, but then the other rook falls. 
Andrew says, okay, gives a couple checks, and now starts marching his pawn. Now, this is a very subtle threat of mate in two. Piers doesn't see it, says, I'll take that rook, and gets checkmated. Overall, Piers played a fine game. All right, this was a, a fine game. After blundering the queen, he went downhill, he panicked, he started trading, made some bad moves. But, the, but by Andrew, a 98% accuracy game, incredible. Now, it was a 33 move game. And I suppose most of his moves were obvious. There wasn't much he could do to mess it up. So 98% accuracy makes more sense in that regard. But still, it is uh, incredible. 98% accuracy is not something heaps of people uh, can achieve. Um, now this was, I hope you enjoyed this very short recap. Um, yeah, short, short, displaying the game. I'm rambling for no reason. The video should have ended by now. Goodbye.